your audio sucks, but today we're going to fix that. This video is sponsored by Universal Music for Creators, but more on that later. I've made a couple of these microphone setup tutorials before, however, the majority of which have been in OBS Studio, and a couple of you, a lot of you, have been asking me about Elgato Wavelink instead, and what settings and filters you should use in that software. So today I'm going to be covering this microphone, the Elgato Wave DX, in Elgato's Wavelink software. And yes, before you ask, these settings and stuff will still work with any microphone that you have, and also can be transferred over to OBS Studio, because the VST plugins I'm going to be Using can be installed in OBS as well. Something a lot of people seem to overlook is the importance of microphone position, because if you position your microphone wrong to begin with, no amount of filters and settings are going to make your audio sound better. For example, if you position it a foot or two away from your mouth, you're now going to have to turn the gain up to be able to hear you properly, which is going to pick up a lot more reverb and echo and just bad sounds in your space. Whereas if you get it on a nice stand or a boom arm like this and get it positioned about six inches away from your mouth, preferably about a fist distance away, as you can kind of hear, it sounds much more professional because I can turn the gain down and you're not going to hear as much background noise and echo and reverb. A common mistake I see a lot of people make is they set up the input gain of their microphone way too loud. And if you don't know what the input gain is, basically it's just how loud your microphone is before you add any effects or filters to your audio. So in order to actually set up our input gain correctly, we're first going to do two things. The first of which is we're going to open OBS Studio or any recording or streaming software that you like to use. But the reason we're doing that is so we can see our audio meters so we can check the volume correctly when we make changes. Then the second thing we're going to do is to open Elgato Wavelink software and if you have any filters of something on your microphone already, I want you to remove all of them. Which, as you can hear, doesn't exactly sound the best, but it does give us a nice blank canvas to start working with, so now we can actually do our input gain and then start adding filters to make this sound a lot more professional. Personally, I'm going to set up my microphone's input gain using the Elgato Wave XLR, but for those of you with like the USB options instead, you'll have to use the gain knob on the front of that microphone, or potentially the actual slider in Wavelink software. So the first change you're going to do is to find your microphone, open our settings, and then make sure the sample rate is set as high as possible. For me, that's 96 kilohertz hertz but for you that might be slightly different or might not even have this option if you have a usb one but get it as high as possible and you'll get the highest quality audio out of the equipment that you're using next we're going to skip a few of these options and come down to audio enhancements and then make sure that low cut filter is turned off because you'll set that up yourself later on when we do eq and finally in this section turn off clip guard which sounds counterproductive because obviously you want to avoid peaking and clipping and stuff like that but we're going to be setting up our own limiter later on down in our filters and effects section and stuff like that but the clip guard i like to turn off because the way that it works is it's recording a loud sound and a quiet sound of your microphone all at the same time so if you get too loud it just switches to this second like recording so that you don't clip but if you're using things like a compressor or something like that, then it can kind of cause audio issues sometimes. So I turn it off just to be safe. And last but not least, we can actually go to our device input section here and set up our input gain. So the first thing here is obviously make sure phantom power is turned on if you're using a condenser microphone or if you're like me and have a dynamic microphone, you don't need to have phantom power on. And then finally, we can actually set up our input gain. And the best way to do that is to keep talking at a normal level and then keep changing this around until you're hitting around minus 12 or so so between this minus 15 and minus 10 on the audio meters so for me that's usually around 45 decibels or so the first filter we're going to add to our microphone is going to be a noise gate filter and if you don't know what a noise gate does effectively it just turns off your microphone when you're not speaking when the audio volume goes below a certain amount it just cuts the signal which means we can avoid any background sound and stuff when you're not like engaging with your audience however before we set up the noise gate filter we need to actually download the plugin for wavelength software and i might as well tell you all the filters you need to download at this point so you don't keep going back and forth thankfully elgato have this helpful recommended vst page on their website which links to and allows you to download all of the stuff we'll need so starting with equalizer we're going to use the elgato equalizer next for compressor you could use the inbuilt elgato one but i much prefer this rough rider 3 for noise gate which is the thing we're going to do first we're going to use this very simple one called D gate noise suppression we're going to use Elgato's own so either get the standard one if you don't have an RTX card but if you do then you can get this NVIDIA version of it 
right here. Don't need vocal effects, but we are going to download a DS, and the one we're going to get is this one by Sweetvox, this one here. And last but not least, we're going to download one of my favorite ever plugins, which is Loudmax Limiter. And don't worry, I will link to all of these filters in the description down below. But while you're down there, smash that like button because obviously this is a lot of work. Now that you've downloaded and installed all of these VST plugins, we can finally add them to our microphone. So to do that, you want to obviously come to your microphone options here, go down to the bottom to find the filter options, which is this like little waveform, press on it, go to add effect, and then add Dotec Audio D gate. One of the best ways to figure out your noise gate settings is basically turn off the gate for a second and then watch the OBS meters and then whatever level your background noise is, you want to set your noise gate filter a few decibels above that. For example, mine's hitting around minus 55 decibels, which means when I turn the noise gate on, I want to turn it on and then put it about five decibels above that. So I'm personally going to have it around minus 50. And if you set it up all correctly, it should sound fine when you're actually talking like this. But if you stop talking, the noise gate should cut out any noise coming through. Next, we're going to set up noise suppression. And noise suppression is one of those filters that's kind of subjective. Not everybody needs it depending on the space that they create in. So if you're in a particularly loud space, say with like a loud keyboard or neighbors and pets that constantly make noise, or you've got lots of fans and AC units in your room, then maybe you'll need noise suppression to avoid any of that background noise while you're actually speaking. Super easy filter to set up though. All you have to do is to come down to your filters here, go to add effect and then choose Elgato noise removal or the Nvidia version if you have an RTX card. If you don't have an RTX card, it's literally just the on off kind of switch. If you do have an RTX card though, you've got the on off switch as well, but also a strength slider to play around with, which obviously you can't see because I have an old GPU still. Definitely test this out in your own setup though, because it can cause some weird audio glitches sometimes if you like laugh or scream and stuff. So if you're having those issues, try not to use noise suppression. Obviously having a good sounding microphone is super important, but if you're a content creator, having professional music for your videos and live streams is equally as important. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Universal Music for Creators. If you're a filmmaker, a content creator, or even a live streamer, Universal Music for Creators can take your content to the next level. With a huge library of award-winning songs and sound effects, which honestly sounds amazing. So if you want a song that sounds like this, or maybe one that sounds a little more like this, Universal Music for Creators has a wide variety of songs and sound effects to suit your needs. So if you're a creator who actually wants to show your work online and potentially get paid, it's important to use claims-free music, otherwise you risk copyright strikes and DMCA takedowns. Universal Music for Creators has lightning-fast search, affordable subscriptions and clearance on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and even Twitch. Most of the music can be split up into its individual stems as well as having shorter versions to download so you can customise and edit all of the music to fit your projects perfectly. In case you hadn't realised, already all the music that's in this video is actually from Universal Music for Creators because I'm not going to recommend something to you guys unless it's something I'm personally using I think it's worth checking out. If you do want to learn some more then I'll leave a link in the description down below because obviously there's a couple of different subscriptions depending on your specific needs however if you do want to save a few pennies use the code OWL2 and you can get yourself two months for free. Now we're actually getting to the fun part of setting our microphone up. The first few filters basically just help get rid of any background noise, where this next filter, the EQ, effectively just tunes your microphone so it suits your voice to make it sound as good as possible. And Elgato have made EQ in your microphone easier than ever. So what you want to do is to come down to the bottom, obviously, go to add effect and then add in the Elgato EQ, which are going to be greeted with this page here, which doesn't have much settings and stuff on it right now. However, if you come to this little menu at the top, you should be able to see that Elgato have actually introduced presets to the EQ, which means you no longer have to be like an audio expert to get good EQ on your microphone. You can use one of these presets to get you most of the way there. However, I will say they don't come pre-installed. You have to download them from the Elgato marketplace. So to do that, you want to come back to Elgato Wavelink, close this and then open the marketplace, which is this little logo at the top. Once the marketplace is open, come to the search bar and search for Equalizer. You'll then be able to search through all these presets. So you've got a dynamic mic EQ by Harris Heller. You've got a female specific vocal one on here. You got a Wave 3 setup and even a Wave DX preset by Epos Fox, which is the one that I chose for my setup, but obviously choose the one that suits you best. Once you've downloaded and installed this preset, you can head on back to Elgato Wavelink, where you can come to this menu at the top and then choose the preset which you've just downloaded. Obviously, I started with this Epos Fox Wave DX one, but I modified it 
a little bit so it suits my voice better. And obviously you can do this as well. You don't have to use the preset as is. You can use it as a nice starting base and then tweak the different settings to suit your voice perfectly. As always though, EQ is subjective, so I can't really give you many tips on what you specifically should do for your voice. So do your own research, do your own testing, and I'm sure you'll figure out something that sounds good. Course, that's what I give up before Paul this next filter is super useful. Compressors are amazing for balancing out the difference between your loud and quiet sounds. And you may have noticed throughout most of this video that if I move around a lot, or if I talk quietly, or go very loud, all the audio sounds very unbalanced and all over the place and a compressor is going to fix that. I briefly mentioned earlier on that Elgato has their own compressor now. However, I much prefer to use this Audio Damage Rough Rider 3 one instead because I just think the quality is a little better. So the way that I would set this compressor up is I'm going to start in the top right hand corner with the attack and the release. This is basically how quick the actual compressor works and then release is how quickly it turns off once you stop speaking. So attack, you want as quick as possible, roughly around two milliseconds and then release 250 is fine. Then we're going to hop over onto the main settings of the compressor. We're going to change the sensitivity to around minus 18 decibels. And then I like to have my ratio set at four to one. Then once you've got both of these settings set up correctly, the next one we're going to change is makeup gain. So basically what you want to do with this is keep talking into your microphone and change the makeup gain so that you're hitting between minus 10 and minus five on these meters here. So for me, obviously I'm gonna start at zero and keep talking. I'm right down here at minus 15 right now. I'm gonna add around, I think about seven decibels of makeup gain. But obviously this is going to change on your voice, your microphone, your specific setup. So make sure you're hitting between minus 10 and minus five on the OBS meters. This next filter is a relatively new one for me. I've never included a de into my audio tutorials before, but I thought it'd be useful to add into this audio chain because it can make a big difference depending on the way that you speak. And as the name implies, it's a de which means it helps to remove or at least soften those harsh S and T sounds from your voice, which aren't always the nicest thing to listen to, especially if you're live streaming or content creating and people are listening to your voice for hours on end. So to add a de to your microphone, same as always, you want to find your microphone, come to the filter options at the bottom, go to add effect and then choose Analog Obsession Sweet Vox, which will be greeted with this relatively simple kind of filter. We need to just ignore process and output because they're technically like a compressor and we've already done that. So we just need to change the de which I would advise setting to around 30-35%. Obviously you can test this yourself, but if you do go a little bit too strong with the de you'll end up sounding like you're slurring a little bit or it might just cut your voice off completely when you say S and T's and stuff and it just doesn't sound very good. So I personally have it at like that 30-35%, which I find to be kind of a nice level where it takes off the harshness from your S and T's, but doesn't completely ruin your speech. And finally, now we get to set up one of my absolute favorite plugins. Loudmax is honestly amazing. It's basically a limiter, but also a loudness maximizer, which means it'll stop your audio clipping while keeping it as loud as possible. Same process as all the other filters, but this time you're going to find Loudmax within Thomas Munt and then Loudmax. And yet again, this is a relatively simple plugin to set up. You've only really got two sliders. You've got your threshold slider and your output slider Basically, threshold is the volume at which this filter starts to kick in. And then the output slider is the output volume of where you want to limit your audio. So starting with the output, I like to set this at around minus five decibels. That's a good output level for just streaming and content creation. And then for threshold to set this up correctly, you want to talk into your microphone at a normal speaking level while lowering this down until the orange bar starts moving. So for me, it's going to start moving at around eight decibels or so. As you can see, it's moving here now, but I want to back this off a little bit. So I'm going to turn that down another decibel. So I have my threshold set at around seven. And now we've got all the filters on our microphone, including this loud max limiter. If you look at the OBS meters, when I'm talking, you should see that the actual bar is hitting pretty much consistently around minus five, which in my opinion is a great level for live streaming because that minus five decibels is going to be loud enough so that it's above music and gameplay, but not stupidly loud that it clips and distorts when everything is kind of 
merged together. Anyway, hopefully this video was actually useful for you. I know it was kind of long-winded, but I promise you it's worth setting up your microphone correctly so that your audio and your live streams and stuff sound professional. In the meantime, don't forget to check out the free trial for Universal Music for Creators. It's honestly a great service for all your music and sound effects needs. And also check out this other video I made about live streaming and content creation. And I'll see you all in the next one.